Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to what will be the final week of the season here at Flux Motorsport. I'm going to be your host for this evening. My name's Murphy, and we come at an absolutely prestigious circuit. Everybody will be able to recognise it just from the images on your screen. But of course, the touring cars in their final round come to the Azure Coast in the beautiful city of Monaco for what is going to be a very challenging evening for our drivers. Just finishing up free practice and about to get the qualification session underway. And as you can see, our championship leader, Pro Fubi, currently leading out the grid. But you can see how close it is with just one hundredth of, of a second separating him and the console just in free practice. Let's get ourselves over to the qualification round and see what these guys are made of. But let's have a little run through our grid today. Pro Fubi does take that pole position, does get that bonus point, which separates him and Wadge by one extra point. Wadge does finish in second place, though. Uh, looks as though he might have a grid place penalty, so he could come out in third. I'm not sure whether or not that's already being served. I don't think it is. The console in third position ahead of Lecky 2000, who makes up the second place on the second row. Spankmeyer in 5th with Jack Nemenzies in 6th. Booth Jumbo in 7th with Harry trailing him. Then Al Axon in ninth place in that AMG with Wardy in 10th. Kovkarl does enough for 11th place. Green Gaming in 12th with Porsche Man in 13th. Old Smokey in 14th. And then me sat right there. So it looks as though Old Smokey didn't set a lap and got a 3-place thre grid penalty. Not sure how he's managed that. Speeding in the pit lane is going to be very, very tricky indeed, considering where you actually enter. So we'll wait and see. Lights are done and away we go. Good start from the BMW. Did look as though Pro Fubby just uh, took a little bit of a breath. Snoozed and lost there, it seems, as we come down through turn one. Let's make sure that we're avoiding all contact. Does look as though Jack and Menzies and Spankmeyer just come together a little bit. But everybody through turn one relatively unscathed. Looks as though Pro Fubby's now launching an attack on the console. The console with the inside line. And uh, now it looks as though he's going to have to run a little bit deep, it seems. Yep, and he's managed to keep hold of that first place. Lecky, meanwhile, is sniffing all over the back of Pro Fubby. Let's have a look what comes down into turn six. As though Spankmeyer just locking up the brakes. I thought he was going to come into the back of Wags there, just managing to narrowly avoid. And once again, Pro Fubby launching an attack on the console, able to carry so much speed, it seems, through that downhill section. Let's see whether or not that BMW pulls away through the tunnel. It's not too much into the braking, then into Novell. Looks as though Pro Fubby having a little look up the inside, thinks better of it, ducks back into second. And we're going to see plenty of that with very minimal overtaking positions. Oh, and there's a big, big knock from Wadge into the side of Spankmeyer. He manages to get away with it relatively unscathed. Keeps his oh, and Wadge hits the rear of Spankmeyer again. Almost takes out Lecky. Oh, it's nail-biting stuff, this. My word, it's going to be very, very tricky for any of these drivers to make a pass. Looks as though Wadge's car has got a little bit loose, and that's uh, that's leaving the door right open for both Lecky and Jack DeMenzies. Spankmeyer, meanwhile, got the fastest lap that last lap around 139.079 is the fastest lap so far in this race. And oh, the console loses his rear end. Luckily avoids Spankmeyer, but uh, that is definitely going to be a little bit of rear end damage somewhere, at least on the uh, on the aero. Our aero isn't really a key factor in these rather slow touring cars as it would be for some of the open wheelers, but it's certainly going to play a factor. Meanwhile, though, look how close he's been able to get up to the back of Pro Fubby. Pro Fubby's going to have his elbows well and truly out. Looks as though he's going to hold on to the outside lane, which is the optimum lane, uh, optimum entry for Novell. Don't want to get yourself up onto the inside unless you know that you can make a pass and perhaps outbreak the person ahead of you. And Old Smokey has since left the grid once again on a mare of an end to a season. I think ever since I said that he's uh, looks as though he's turned it around. Ooh, big wobble there from the console. Just manages to keep it together on the run up the hill. 
But uh, huge wobble. I thought he was going wallwards there at uh, relative speed. Front end collision for that BMW will almost be curtains. As soon as he does any serious damage to that front suspension, it's going to be all over the place. But uh, it's certainly given a bit of breathing room to Pro Fubby. He's now sat about a second above the console. Wadge is within touching distance. Looks as though Wadge has been able to make up uh, or at least maintain his gap so far. He is uh, lapping a little bit slower than the front two runners, but uh, he's still keeping there or thereabouts. In fact, with a commentator's curse again, looks as though he's just slipped away a little bit. And since then, Spankmeyer is now closing right up on him. Battle out on track between the ninth place of Kovkarl and the 10th place of Waj. Waj obviously has plenty of pace. He's going to have to work his way back up through the grid. Let's have a look whether or not he can get through relatively easy. That is Waj in the blue and white liveried uh, car that has just made that pass now on Kovkarl. Kovkarl clearly carrying a little bit of damage. And Waj now has Wardy to try and get past. Wardy won't be making this easy for him. He is lapping around about six seconds slower, but uh, it is a race for position. There is no obligation to let that driver through. And I know if I was out on track, I'd be making it as difficult but fair as possible. Oh, Lecky's binned it. Where's he binned it? That looks as though it's at, uh, right, on turn 11, actually, coming out of the chicane. He's got himself moving again, he has, he's uh, minus a bonnet, he's got a massive crack to his windscreen and that bumper is definitely hanging off, but uh, getting it all sorts of wrong. We can see your cylinders lucky, it looks as though Kovkarl's done the same, he's also lost his bonnet. And uh, Kovkarl's race here goes from bad to worse it seems. Lecky now is definitely going to be into the pitch, you can tell. Look at the amount of understeer that he's getting. He's hitting every single wall, although he's missed the uh, the pit lane entrance. He's going to stick this one out, you know. I think he's going to have to stick it out for 15 minutes if he's playing that brave. Kovkar, meanwhile, does return into the pits for the second time in just a couple of laps as well. Now we've got another bit of a late surge on. Wadge has been able to get past Booth Jumbo, so he's exceeded my expectations. He's now coming up to the back of Jack de Menzies. Jack de Menzies will be clinging on for dear life for this fourth position. He is currently third place in the championship. But uh, a deep-seated rivalry. Oh, and a bit of a mistake. Both of them seem to clip the same little bit of barrier coming through the middle of Raskas and it's just sent them both into a bit of a tailspin. I don't think there was collision from Wadge onto the back of Jack. I'm pretty sure I saw them just collect the barrier. High drama in the final four minutes then of race eight here at the Monaco GP circuit. So Jack the Menzies will be holding on to this with dear life. I don't think he's going to be able to keep it. Not based off the, the pace of Wadge. As Wadge has a little look up the inside. That is brave indeed. He uh, forces almost the contact there. There was no room for Jack Nemenzies to go. Very brave indeed. You can see an angry flash of the lights from Jack Nemenzies. The frustration is coming right out. He really wanted to keep hold of that position. But uh, it's not to be. And that uh, puts the console up into third position for the championship. That is the race done for, the championship decided, and the season over here in the FMTCC. Pro Fubby comes out with a victory along with the pole position. I think he's just missed out on the fastest lap, though. Just pulling up that data for you. He has indeed. Doesn't get the triple crown, but does get the championship, so I'm sure he won't be too bothered. The console finishes up in second place, despite his three-second penalty, with Spankmeyer finishing up in third I think uh, the console saved by Spankmeyer's three-second penalty, it seems. Wadge does enough for fourth place in the end, ahead of Jack Nemenzies, who finishes up in fifth. Booth Jumbo in sixth, with Al Axon in seventh, Harry in eighth, and Wardy in ninth in the end. Lecky in tenth, with Green Gaming finishing up in eleventh spot. And then Kovkarl, Old Smokey, both retired along with Porsche Man early on.
So, thank you for joining us for what has been an awesome season all round. Congratulations once again to Profubi for your championship victory.